Like we're going to now introduce Mr. Joel Handorf. Um, and Joel is the uh, 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 the oldest of our panelists. Um, uh, how old are you, sir? Uh, I'm 75. 75, 75. And uh, Joel's been an artist in East Village for 50 years. Uh, he ran a gallery in the East Village called Dramatis Personae. Uh, he currently has an exhibition, a one man exhibition at Ivy Brown Gallery. Uh, he's a retired school teacher and he's a lovely aesthetic gentleman uh, who uh, has been around my social circle for a long time. And his partner is Mr. Jim Farad. I'm going to just go down here to Jim and, and there's there's Jim, and Jim uh, is a is a, a friend of mine uh, uh, for a long time, and Jim has been uh, uh, advocating for patients for a long time. He was around during the time of AIDS, and he's been by Joel's side like every step of the way. And uh, I thought it would be really great to have Jim's perspective too, as a caregiver of a person uh, uh, with COVID. So, Joel, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience with COVID, please? Uh -huh. Thank you for asking me, because listening to you folks really makes me see how lucky I was with the virus, because uh, I spent the last year in, in hospitals. I had surgery a year ago. Essentially, um, what happened is I came, uh, I, I came out of the hospital to rehab, uh, and, uh, rehab and then I came home and I caught the virus from my healthcare worker. Very high temperature, and they, they took me to the hospital, the emergency room, and um, the woman in the emergency room, the doctor said, you don't have the virus, because I had very few symptoms. I ached all over, uh, my uh, oxygen level was 98, I was not having trouble breathing, and uh, they said to me, you don't have the virus. And then as I was leaving, the, the doctor said to me, what are the symptoms that you have? And I said, a oh, post nasal drip. Mm. And she looks and she goes, take him up to the 10th floor. So in other words, a post nasal drip was like the secret uh, um, uh, symptom that uh, supposedly ind indicated the virus. Now you have to understand, I'm a diabetic. I have blood high blood pressure. I have asthma. Uh, I have been, uh, been convalescing from... Uh, something where I couldn't work, I couldn't work independently, and they, uh, and they sent me to the, the most advanced care facility in the hospital, this was Langone, mm -hmm. and, um, and essentially uh, the virus attacked everywhere where I had had surgery. Wow. It did not attack my lungs, and it did not attack uh, my uh, oxygen levels. They wow. couldn't quite figure it out. But the point is, but it did attack like uh, everywhere, even like like the uh, surgery I had like 25 years ago. All of wow. those incisions began to be really painful. The other thing is that I had one back on, on the, on the, uh, on the wound on my back, and the hospitals, uh, the most frightening thing is the hospitals were crazy, and, and because I'm older, they would not believe me that I felt better. They kept on insisting that I was very sick, and I kept on telling them, I'm not sick. So anyway, so I, I don't have to go too much for this. But, but it, the interesting thing is, I stayed in this amazing facility for about four days, and every time I would like have a bowel movement or move off the bed, there would be 20 people at my side. Wait, looking and waiting for me. I remember the last time I looked at them and I said, look, you're all fine young people. I am not sick. <laughs> but they kept on testing me. They kept on testing me and I was positive. So they didn't know what to do with me. So what they did is they threw me down into the first floor, which is where all the people who were recovering, and the people who were recovering were in such worse shape than me. And it was terrifying. The most awful thing about my experience with the virus is no information, not the one. It's separated from people. You know, if I had been sicker, I don't think I would have noticed it so much. But it's, it's, it, the, the hospitals become almost like prisons. Uh -huh. and, and, for example, I was in the second place in the hospital, which was way down in the basement, and rooms that had closed off or whatever, people waiting to be let out. 
and, and a payment to me four in the morning and they said we want to look at your wound back and they tore it off my back without telling me and then uh, and then they came the next day and they said we're moving you to the next facility and i said why and i could get no information none hmm. so they moved me to the next facility my big fear was i had read about the people who have minor symptoms and all of a sudden the symptoms explode into the worst case mm -hmm. ever. Right. I think that that was me. And so, uh, <laughs> and so I kept on waiting to die. You know, I kept on waiting, you know, got, I almost died with the colon infection and I thought, no, this is really it. But, you know, that didn't happen. And the other thing is, the thing that I learned about that is experience is older people are disregarded. Uh -huh. I have to say over and over again, you can't treat me like this, I'm older but I'm not stupid. You have to give me a reason why, you have to tell me why. And one of the rehab places which is really sort of for older, you know, older play, where people go, older people go to sort of live until they probably die or whatever, is very interesting with high psychology that I haven't quite experienced before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The, I probably had the fever of about four days. I continually now have aches and pains all the time. My stomach is upset all the time. It's not quite the same. Uh -huh. My breathing has changed somewhat. Um, it has changed somewhat. And, and, and I, you know, I'm talking to you now, but I have two things that really have low, low anxiety. One is I get headaches, I never had headaches before, uh -huh. and I get exhausted with the littlest thing. Like after we do this, I'm just going to go to bed. Because, right. But there's one thing that I think is really interesting to me. Jim had been taking care of me for the whole I had excellent care, and I had taken lots of zinc. And the zinc boosted my immune system. I may have been debilitated from what I was experiencing, but I was on the mend that I was getting better. And, and I think that the, the care that I got for the E. coli carried over to the, to the care, to the self-care that I began to have with the virus. The other thing is, I have been doing lots and lots of exercise, uh -huh. as a matter of course. And I think exercise in terms of getting better is, is really central to this. The other thing that really surprised me that I was really more concerned about is I was concerned that Jim would get the virus. And, yeah. and I mean, we're both sort of in that age range where, you know, that we fall into certain, but Jim doesn't have many things as well with him, but just age-wise, it, it, really, it really is something that is upsetting. And he didn't, which I, which I really find absolutely fascinating. I think it has to do with the boosted immune system and the way you took care of yourself. Wow, that's and so great. I, I'm going to stop now because there's a lot that I can add, and I could talk the whole time. So. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna just like kind of kick around some. The first thing I just wanted to throw it out to you guys. If, if any of you have thoughts on this, when it was coming on, like, were you aware of it? Were you thinking maybe I have it, or was it more like just your general health? And then the diagnosis came out of left field. And when the symptoms started to happen, were you wondering if they may be COVID, or did that not occur to you? And then when the diagnosis was confirmed, are there any uh, like thoughts or connected to that? Um, I figured that that's what it was because my wife and I both got sick at the same, same time, time on the same day. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And of course, it's all we had been hearing about for, you know, three weeks, uh, yeah. you know, prior, prior to our onset. And so we figured, okay, this, this must be it. I mean, you know, we had been... Uh, sort of quarantining ourselves to begin with and staying out of everyone's way and wearing a mask and all this other kind of business already. Uh -huh. uh, but when we both started feeling lousy, then it's figured, well, it's probably not just a cold. You know, it very well might be, you know, the, the crowning glory 19. So, yeah. Um, 
man. And, and I didn't think much of it uh, other than the fact it was like, okay, I had already done everything I possibly could to be healthy to begin with. And so, you know, we laid in um, supplies. And I, I tell you, a friend of mine who had, who was a very compromised person on Facebook had written out like an entire diary and, and a list of what it is you should have if you, to be prepared for this, you need to have enough hydration so it was pedialyte make sure you have pedialyte in the house make sure you have protein like ensure in the house get a working thermometer have an oxometer have all these preparations and have food and have enough to drink and make sure you've got vitamins and make sure you've got abcd mm -hmm. that's and she had already laid this out she gave out like a like a, a a shopping list for all of us and she had already been starting on all this big mess and she had an awful experience uh, uh -huh. and she had starting starting from a very compromised position and she made it uh -huh. but it, it was she was really really in, in, in a problem so yeah. we had already been prepped for this in a way and we were just ready to just hunker down and just yeah plow through yeah That's yeah all. what yeah, else can yeah. you do and david you was your brother diagnosed before you no, that's one of the biggest uh, things is he should have said something to me that he was he, that he just gotten over a sickness. He didn't. Uh -huh. But on the other side of that is he uh, he didn't know he had it. So he just thought he was sick because uh, he got the chills and he was fatigued, which was yeah. my symptoms. Mm -hmm. And um, he, you know, I, I look back at what could have been different and we tested like other countries. He would have been tested, you know, a day or two after he was sick. And I would have knew I would have known to stay away from him. Um, and so, uh, I'm, I'm a little bitter about that. Yeah. Part of me thinks like, you know, I look at New York's response of flattening the curve and not everybody rushing to the hospital. And I know that saved my life because, um, when I got to NYU, I also went to NYU Lagone and had similar experiences, uh, to Joel <laughs> with um, not getting answers. And you really have to fight for your, uh, thinking even at the best hospitals uh -huh. but um i know that they only had 16 17 ECMO machines and i was the 16th patient and i know if they got if they got swamped if there wasn't a flattening of the curve I, I would be dead wow. um so that's one of the things that stands out to me yeah. for me when i found out i celebrated i immediately contacted my principal and I said hey I, I got covid i'm out i actually thought um i would be uh, healed in a few days because i'm i'm in relatively good shape yeah. and uh when i woke up after 30 days i actually thought i won't i thought i just took a nap. Uh, yeah. i thought i took a nap for a few hours or maybe a day or two wow. uh, it didn't feel like uh, 30 days to me and uh um, wow yeah, yeah, everybody else. I mean, don't they, do they, they knock you out, though, before they do the whole intubation, do they not? Uh, the last memory I have was um, they're, they're, they, they told me, hey, look, you're about to go under. Um, and I said, great, you know, do, do what you got to do. No, I was so overconfident. And to some degree, I realized, because I was thinking, you know, I've, I'm very lucky to be alive. But then I got, I'm also unlucky that I got hit so hard um, being, uh, I was overweight, but um, didn't have other issues. And uh, I, I felt kind of, um, you know, it was, my mind always plays with that. Do I go with uh, being grateful or do I go with, uh, boy, I got a rough go at it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Well, well, I'm grateful you're here, bud. <laughs> That's what I'm grateful for. 